tour of the Small Workshop Guys Small Workshop 2018. Hola, woodworkers. Paul Carlson here, Small Workshop Guy. So uh, let's start the tour here, having come inside the garage doors. Uh, I find the strategic place to place the table saw is about four feet inside the garage door. That way, uh, most of the time, even though we got great weather in, in Northern California, uh, we still, because I'm in a homeowner's association, I need to work with the garage door down most of the time. So I put it far enough in here to give myself some room to, uh, for my infeed. But at the same time, if I need more, then I can open the doors. Uh, so I find this to be the strategic place. I'm not normally working on that side of the table saw. So I've put that up against the wall. In order to utilize the walls, uh, I have experimented with other ways of doing wood storage. But I will never do anything other than uh, vertical storage again. When I'm going to do a project, I will plan that project and go buy the wood for that single project and then store it around various places in the workshop. Excuse me, just a second. Coming off of a cold. So anyway, uh, let's try not to go too slow here. Uh, I built uh, clamp racks and so I find that to be very, very uh, good. Uh, they're all reachable. Uh, I feel I made a mistake buying 50 inch uh, panel clamps. I just don't think I'm going to do that many jobs that size. I would be happier, I believe, with uh, 24 or 30 inch uh, panel clamps. I recently experienced that when I am working on the tabletops for my Samurai workbench and uh, trying to use those 50 inchers on something that's only uh, you know, 20 inches wide was overkill and cumbersome and a problem in a small workshop. So anyway, I, I store my wood here. I have uh, like my earmuffs and my respirator and my brush. Uh, and more importantly, a little checklist. So when I'm getting ready to use my table saw, being a relative rookie of three or four years of woodworking, uh, I need some reminders. So I got to remind myself to open up the proper gates to my dust collection system. I got to remind myself to have my push sticks, push sticks ready. And yes, I got the grippers and I feel very safe with those. I like those. Obviously, I bought the saw stop in order to keep these things on my hand for the rest of my life. So. Um, Anyway, I, I have a checklist there, open the gate, have the push checks ready, get my glasses on, put on the respirator, put on the earmuffs, and then check my clearances, make sure everything that I'm gonna work on is gonna go through properly, in feed and out feed. Last thing I wanna do is get in the middle of a cut and find out that I can't push the board any further. So um, underneath, uh, I feel it's important to have some cushioning, particularly if you're age 76, uh, five as I am when I'm filming this. Uh, you're always gonna get a lot of off cuts. And so I have just a red barrel here full of all of my scrap off cuts that then go to the junkyard or dump yard every uh, few months. Or if I'm working on a big project, more often. Uh, Got the little one, two, three uh, metal workers uh, device for real quick measurements. I find that if I don't have something that's really easy to set up and do, then I won't use it. So uh, for my feather guide, I like this uh, mag switch or mega switch. Turn that little thing and they clamp down like crazy. So that's my uh, table saw set up here. I have a little uh, roller type of a device so that if I need to support uh, an end piece uh, that's pretty cumbersome, then I can do that. And then behind the table saw, I have just a box uh, with some pieces that probably will be usable again later. And then the concept that I use um, is to use my contractor's saw, which was what I had before I had the uh, the nice one, 
and I just leave my dado blade on it. So the contractor saw becomes my outfeed table for my saw stop and my saw stop becomes the outfeed table for my contractor saw. If I'm going to put a, a big sled on here, uh, then I, I do need to just pull this away a little bit so that my sled doesn't get bound up on this because I want these to be level. Uh, dust collection wise in this island that I have here, I have uh, a uh, cyclone and then coming off the cyclone or feeding into the cyclone, I have one main tube that's been split into three sections. So one is permanently on my saw stop, one is permanently on my um, contractor saw with a dado blade in it, and then the other one uh, is on a long flexible tube and that will literally reach anywhere across my workshop and attach to like the thickness planer, the jointer, the drill press, uh, the band saw, uh, or act as my vacuum for, for cleaning stuff up. Uh, I have spent a lot of time creating sleds for my table saws and then I had to rework them when I bought the new saw stop. So anyway, I probably off camera part of that time, but I'm sure you could hear me. Let's uh, move on into the garage and see another section. For the dust collection system, I have a shop fox. It's obviously hung up on the wall using a good fortification across the studs because it's very heavy. And then I've got the uh, cyclone from Rockler. That's just the lid and then you go to like Home Depot and buy the 31, 32 gallon, uh, you know, waste can. Uh, and that, I really, I'm pleased with that. That works really, really well. Uh, and it's amazing uh, how much goes into the waste can and how little actually makes it into the bag. So anyway, I'm pleased with the dust collection. Do I wish I had nice permanent uh, ducts running all around the garage, uh, reaching every tool? Yes, but you know what? Uh, you walk before you run. So right now I'm uh, walking with this set up and it's pretty effective. I'm pretty happy with it. As far as utilizing space, uh, I've got these uh, crosscut sleds, one for the contractor saw, one for the uh, big saw stop. Uh, that is the Stumpy Nubs Mega Crosscut Sled uh, with a multitude of jigs that go on it for things like cutting tenons and dovetails and so forth. So anyway, uh, those fit very nicely just on their ends down uh, circling that island. So that Speaking of things in a convenient central location on the floor, here is my uh, compressor uh, hooked up with the uh, pneumatic hose, obviously, and then I keep a blower on the end of that, and that is using um, a little thing to, to just hang it on the edge of the workbench, and then I can pull it over to the table saw, I can pull it to the compound miter saw, anywhere I need to, uh, even to my workbench uh, if I'm, you know, shaving things and cutting things and I want to blow all the debris out of the way. So for today's tour I've got my garage set up the way it would be when I'm actually doing woodworking as opposed to filming videos. So when I'm woodworking I like to have my compound miter saw up and ready to go and powered up. Uh, if I got it stuck over in a corner somewhere and I need to move it and plug it in and everything, uh, then I'll end up grabbing a hand saw and doing something instead. So I like my power tools, I like to use them, so the idea is to have them set up 100% of the time when you're actually working. Uh, so I had the island over there with the contractor saw and the saw stop and the clamps and the wood storage and then I've got a second island here with my temporary work table uh, and it is got the electrical on it and it's got storage underneath for a lot of my jigs for my uh, Stumpy Nugs mega crosscut sled and um, and so this is my work table, multiple layers of MDF and plywood, extremely heavy, doesn't rack on me too much, but it's in the process, and that's what these are, 
of being replaced with a five-foot version of the Samurai work table. So that's my project for the next couple of months. Uh, I take my time. And by the way, if you want to slow down your woodworking, then decide to become a YouTube channel because you'll bring your woodworking to a screeching halt until you get it all figured out. So uh, that's what I've managed to do. And I'm looking forward to getting back to more uh, of my real woodworking and, and uh, less time now that I've kind of figured it out on shooting the videos. Lighting wise, um, I, I like to have on my work table a little movable uh, light. When you get to be uh, in your mid 70s, your eyes start to fail. And so having proper lighting is uh, critical. I even have some shop lights that I can put up on the bicycle tires and add some additional illumination. So uh, anyway, does it work? Um, looking forward to getting my samurai workbench in here uh, with real nice uh, materials. The compound miter saw you're looking at is on a um, device called a portamate, and the portamate swings, uh, the wings swing up, and, and then you can even raise a little platform. Well, why don't I show you? So let's take a look at this uh, portamate. I've, underneath there, actually, I have a uh, shop vac, and that's connected uh, all the time to my uh, compound miter saw. Okay, so uh, these wings uh, fold up here and this even comes up as to be level with the bed here or goes down. You can even release a couple of latches and rotate that miter saw underneath the table and pull up the other wing and have a seven foot uh, assembly table or work table. So very, very versatile. I highly recommend it. And it's on rollers. And so when I'm like shooting videos over here, I just pull the, the uh, entire unit back over here against uh, some of these other devices. So I'm very, very happy with that. I know most people have their compound miter saw on the wall uh, with big uh, workbenches on both sides. Uh, I find this works for me. Multiple ways to skin the cat. I absolutely love the concept of the tool wall. So here's my uh, workbench and here's everything that I need with any frequency. What I did was obviously this is just plywood here with some uh, varathane on it and then drill some holes and put in some dowels and just lay things out in an organized manner. But another thing that I really liked that I did was I put a uh, just, you know, a, a inch wide by a five inch uh, and six foot long uh, board up above secured to the studs. And then I simply put these bicycle uh, hooks in there. I bought about 12 of them off of Amazon, hung those up there, and I find that to be very, very convenient. Uh, to hang up my hand power tools and some of my clamps. Uh, I considered doing cubicles, but I just thought that dust would collect on the top of the cubicles, dust would collect on the tools inside the cubicles, and that would be a problem. I like this better. I can take out the old blower and I can just blow the dust off of everything and right out the garage door. So I do that about once a month. So anyway, on my uh, tool up above, I have my pneumatic tools, my staplers, my nail guns. I have a little uh, skill saw. I have the jigsaw. I have some clamps. I have a little, uh, um, you know, router, compact router, trim router. I have some more clamps. I have some more drills. Starting over here, you know, I've got my woodworking hammers. I got my Craig uh, clamps. Uh, don't do a lot of the Craig stuff anymore. I've got my Narex uh, chisels, both the bevel edge chisels, and then also the uh, mortise chisels. I've got a number of 
uh, blades of different types separated with little styrofoam so that they're not uh, leaning against each other. I've even got some Narex uh, screwdrivers, kind of disappointed in those. I wish they were beefier uh, down at the end. They must have been for a different purpose. Got my Japanese saws, got my, then I've got obviously my planes. So um, the first plane I got was a Stanley Bailey uh, number five for $69, absolute piece of crap. Uh, so anyway, I've got some nice ones. I've got the number seven uh, Wood River. It's a convenient place to hang your little magnetic uh, angle uh, devices on it. Uh, you know, some people don't like that approach because then you got to take those off there to grab it. Well, I don't grab the number seven jointer plane all that often. I've got a brand new, very happy to have it, a low angle, uh, Lee Nelson, Nielsen, uh, number 62. So that's my low angle jack plane. I've got a uh, Lee Nielsen uh, smoothing plane, number four. And I have a Stanley Bailey sweetheart uh, smoothing plane, number four. Again, obviously I had that first and then I bought this. Uh, why do I spend so much money on the planes? Uh, because I'm going to use them and enjoy them and they perform like crazy and then they're going to be inherited by um, one of my sons. And so I wanted him to think well of me. So I thought, hey, why don't I spend a couple hundred dollars extra and get the really, really nice stuff. Plus, I like supporting uh, even though I didn't do it with the Wood River, I like supporting a U.S. manufacturing company and uh, Lee Nielsen qualifies. Got my little block plane. I have the Lee Nielsen uh, router plane. Uh, looking forward to some projects to use that. And then better have a fire extinguisher uh, ready, willing, and able if you're a klutz like I am and might actually be doing some of the wrong things. And then I have all my measuring devices uh, over here. And so I'm very, very pleased with the tool wall. And uh, I try to make things earn their way up there because I'm gonna use them frequently. So I highly recommend that. So over here in my uh, built-in shelving, uh, which I built long before I got into woodworking. It was just for, you know, as a homeowner uh, trying to maintain the house. Uh, I have these uh, cabinets that I got from uh, a local hardware store and put them all together and put them in. Uh, pretty pleased with it. I have uh, my computer station here. Uh, this is a uh, Google Wi-Fi device, and so I have, you know, great access right here in the garage because this is my man cave. I mean, this is where I watch videos. This is where I get some time to myself. I have an Alexa Echo. There, she turned on for me. Alexa, play Elvis Presley. Shuffling songs by Elvis Presley. So anyway, you got your music, got to have that in your workshop. Alexa, off. Alexa, what is three divided by eight? Three divided by eight is 0 0.375. So anyway, uh, she's very helpful to me when I need to do conversions from, uh, from even uh, inches to milli millimeters and so forth. Uh, so I like having my laptop out here to look up things. I might be uh, trying to build a jig that somebody's got a video on, and so I run the video while I build the jig. Uh, I've got some battery charging here. I've got a basically a secret camera so that I've got motion detection built in. If somebody comes into my garage, uh, I will know about it upstairs. I will have a nice picture of them. I will have a video of them. And the police and I will have a good time trying to get my uh, Lee Nielsen uh, bench planes back. So, uh, so in uh, front of my furnace, I have my uh, desktop drill press. It's a WEN. Uh, I didn't know what I'm doing when I first was buying this equipment, so I went as inexpensively as I could until I could get some experience and learn what the trade-offs were and so forth. Actually, it turns out, 
even though that's uh, maybe a $250 or maybe less uh, drill press, I've been very happy with it. But maybe that's a question of not knowing what you're missing. That's obviously sitting in front of uh, my furnace uh, and my water heater. Uh, I'm very careful to blow out my garage at least once a month to get all the accumulation of dust and everything uh, off of any ducts so that I don't end up uh, creating a fire. So uh, that's my drill press. All right, not in the most accessible place, but this isn't where I use it, is my Q-Tech 8-inch uh, jointer. And I didn't spend a whole lot of money, I think less than $500. Uh, once again, uh, not wanting to go crazy until I learned the ins and outs and the pros and the cons uh, before I upgrade uh, to the better devices. Got a little inexpensive router table, got a piece of junk uh, Ryobi uh, router underneath there. Uh, those will get upgraded. Uh, that thing's very difficult for me to work with to get it adjusted as far as the height. Obviously, I don't have it on a, one of those fancy uh, uh, raising and lowering devices. Um, don't do a tremendous amount of routing. Uh, that does have good dust collection on it, and so I pull that uh, cord across from the room and hook it up to that and pick that up. Underneath there, I've stored my uh, really nice uh, little compact router uh, plus the uh, edge guide and it's a plunging router and I've got the bushings uh, and so I'm going to use that to create some mortises for my mortise and tenon on my uh, samurai workbench. So on the remainder of this wall over here, I have a pegboard system on the back, and then I've got like work lights, extension cords, the broom, uh, sheet rocking, uh, putty knives and things of that nature, uh, a lot of uh, things to hold together carcasses when I'm doing joinery work, uh, staplers, my Craig uh, devices, uh, any kind of jigs I bought, extra blades for the for the uh, bandsaw and so forth. The bandsaw is just a win. I think the uh, the bandsaw and the drill press together, I believe, were under five hundred dollars. Again, uh, it, it, it's been working great for me. Uh, maybe I don't know what I'm missing. But uh, I've been able to do the things I wanted to do on a bandsaw. When I get into maybe uh, finer furniture and carpentry, I'll realize that it's a piece of crap. But at this point, it works pretty darn good for me. Uh, Lighting-wise, recommend something. This is a little uh, sewing machine light. It's got a powerful magnet in it. It's electrical. So when you got these devices and you're, and you're uh, next to electrical, which obviously you are and because they're powered, you can put that puppy on there, little LED lights, put it where you want it and uh, get the illumination you need. You know, these things that come with it, you know, they, uh, they need a little Viagra. I don't know what, how they build them, but they don't, they don't stay where you need them to stay. So uh, like I say, some Viagra would be good for those. For the stand that my uh, bandsaw is sitting on that, that came with it, I teach it all the time, my sharpening system. So I just take that off, put it over on my workbench, and keep it out if I'm doing any chiseling or any uh, bench plane work. Now, a small workshop, again, the secret is to find places to put things. If I put that away in a drawer, then I won't get it out. If I have it there where I can grab it and in five seconds have it ready to go, then I'll use it and I'll keep my stuff sharp as I work. Then I've got a, a WEN thickness planer, no complaints, seems to be working great. Again, maybe I'm just naive and don't know what I'm missing. I built a, a stand for it and then that stand, of course, has some open area to store things like dado blades and, and uh, various devices and then in a couple of drawers for nails and screws and, and all of those kinds of things. So that, uh, that is that section of the garage. We've made the complete tour now. We've, we've gone from 
the opening uh, right hand side all the way around my tool wall my back shelf my drill press I got a lot of stuff in here and uh, let me show you one more set of stuff that I have in here and finally since I am part of a family and I do have two grandchildren living with me uh, they're 14 year old twins I love them boys one of them is got a body I wish I had uh, and so he's got some weightlifting equipment he's doing uh, as he gets older and older he's doing a better and better job of keeping his stuff kind of corralled and neat and organized because uh, he knows that would drive grandpa nuts uh, if it was a mess all the time so uh, I'm happy to let him have this section of the garage he just pull things out into the driveway does his workouts and puts them all back so that's my workshop I'm pretty proud of it uh, given the constraints I have with the homeowners association single car garage uh, I'll, I'll put some pictures of my view from the back uh, to show you why I will not be moving and so I need to make the best of this space so I've got the beautiful view in the back and I got the nice little man cave here in the front and I am enjoying uh, woodworking and uh, look forward to doing more of it look forward to doing videos for some of you beginners share my experience with you I'm doing a lot of uh, three minute overviews on woodworking topics and then in those three minute overviews there are links to uh, more extensive videos uh, by a lot of the other expert presenters so uh, that's the concept I think it should be very useful uh, for me it's kind of fun to do yeah if you want to learn anything in life then teach it and so uh, having to do videos has, has taught me a lot about my uh, video shooting equipment my DSLR uh, Premiere Pro uh, SketchUp uh, so anyway it just adds a lot more flavor to my woodworking I do warn you go uh, before you get seduced into doing videos make sure you really want to spend 80% of your time working on videos and 20% of your time doing woodworking now maybe some of those guys have worked it out where they can do better but for me right now that's the case I guess I'm just a real slow super klutz at producing my videos that's it a small workshop guy signing off